from Renewable Energy Laboratory, and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar hosted by the U.S. Department of Energy Solar Decathlon. Before we begin, I'll quickly go over some of the webinar features. For audio, you have two options. You can listen through your computer or telephone. If you choose to listen through your computer, please select the mic and speakers option in the audio pane. If you, by doing so, we'll eliminate the possibility of feedback and echo. If you select the telephone option, you should already see a box on the right side that displays the telephone number. Panelists, we ask that you please mute your audio device while you are not presenting. If you have technical difficulties with the webinar, you can contact the GoToWebinar help desk for assistance. If you'd like to ask a question, please use the questions pane to type in your question. If you're having difficulties viewing the materials through the webinar portal, today's webinar is being recorded and the recording will be available. And now for today's presentation. Our webinar today is Kickstart Your Solar Decathlon Design Challenge. Our speakers today are Rachel Romero, Project Leader and Energy Engineer at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, and she's also the Design Challenge Manager and Sam Rashkin, Chief Architect at the DOE Building Technologies Office and the Co-Director of Solar Decathlon. With that, I'd like to welcome Rachel to start today's presentation. Thanks, Lynn. Thank you, everyone, for attending the webinar today. Again, my name is Rachel Romero, and I am an engineer here at NREL. And I'm also here to help your team understand the competition to compete successfully. So today we have a lot of great information for you. Sam Rashkin, um, our Solar Decathlon co-director, is going to give an introduction to the competition and the design challenge. Then I will cover the details from the competition guide on the design challenge. We will conclude with a Q&A period, but feel free to add your questions at any time during the webinar, like Lynn said. So with that, Sam. Hey, thank you so much, Rachel, and welcome everyone to the design challenge. Now let's first get to the obvious most important point is the design challenge is what used to be the DOE Race to Zero student design competition. There's tremendous advantages for us to combine with this amazing solar decathlon competition and the students will get uh, extra benefits for being able to not only see uh, other Race to Zero competitors in action but also the solar decathlon competitors who will be committed to actually building homes they design. So what is the Solar Decathlon uh, for both the build and the design challenge? It's a it's a basically a collegiate competition working with 10 contests uh, and it's trying to demonstrate the amazing ingenuity of these university programs to develop really highly efficient, high performance buildings powered by renewable energy. That's what it says. But what it really is, is an amazing opportunity for students to truly ramp up their skills and readiness to go into the workforce because these are the buildings of the future. So if we go to the next slide, here's the new construct for the competition with both these wonderful DOE student opportunities combined into one program, the Solar Decathlon Competition. The build challenge is the old former solar decathlon with two options. One is a national showcase, much like the original competition, where there's a single location uh, and homes come together to showcase the work of the students. This year, new for that build challenge, there's a local build where students who do not want to ship their homes long distance are able to build their homes locally, showcase them locally, and then bring small parts or models of their homes to the main event at the National Showcase. But today we're here to talk about the design challenge. And that's where the students will de develop incredibly important designs for our market today. And there are six uh, divisions within which they can work. Uh, there are two full commercial options to do elementary schools and office buildings three residential options, which are urban single family, suburban single family, attached housing, and then mixed uses, both commercial and residential in one building. So tremendous diversity of competition options, way much more than the original Race to Zero student design competition. Thereafter, at the bottom, there'll be 10 uh, contests that the students have to compete in. More about those later. 
So, in fact, I'll just touch on those 10 comp uh, contest categories now. Everything begins first and foremost with the energy performance. These DOE competitions are truly targeting the highest performance buildings that can be developed for our market today and in the future. Thereafter, everything demonstrates how we integrate that energy performance in the other criti critical aspects of doing buildings, how they're engineered, how they're designed, how they consider the needs of the occupants in the community so they live better, and how they're constructible uh, in the case of the design competition today's marketplace, how they're financially feasible, how they're resilient and can address challenges that are ever increasing today with more and more disaster risk, how they operate effectively and how they deliver comfort and good indoor air quality, how they exploit innovations new or existing, and lastly, how we convey our ideas. It's not enough to have a great solution if you don't convey compelling ways why it works, your ideas may never see reality. So this is the 10 contests within which you speak. Rachel will cover them in more detail later. But the key is you have to do well across all contests to be a winner. And the big question is, why are we focusing on zero energy buildings? And the answer is that in every way, they're better for our country. They're better for the homeowners and for the building occupants who will just have better experiences. That not only will the buildings cost incredibly little cost to, uh, to operate for utility bills, which are ultra low or zero, they'll live better in terms of the health, the comfort, the durability. Uh, in many cases in commercial buildings, we find that these buildings um, have, are more productive for the workers, more retention for the workers, less sick days. Uh, there's so many factors that show these are just a compelling building experience for the occupants and for the builders and contractors that build these homes and buildings they have a better experience uh, the buildings have less defects and less callbacks they have more customer satisfaction they're differenti differentiating differentiating them in the marketplace so they are more uh, compelling choice as a builder or contractor tremendous improvement in their experience. And lastly, for society, we get uh, buildings and homes that uh, are cost over a trillion dollars less energy to operate that go back into the economy and help our economy. They create hundreds of thousands of jobs. They reduce millions of tons of emissions that produce, allow us to have cleaner air and cleaner water. Uh, in every way, zero energy is a future because it's better for everyone involved. So moving on to the next slide, uh, one of the things that we think is really important about this competition is how it truly prepares you for careers of the future, and in fact, has in many cases, immediate opportunities for students to move into new careers. And we wanna highlight just a few examples of students who've been uh, race to zero competitors who've had very successful um, move ups to really outstanding careers. Um, Ms. Simpson is from our very first race to zero, and he now works for a company called Digibuilt, which is digitizing with software as a service solutions for the industry, uh, ways of getting BIM and mass customization available for the marketplace in a way that can be truly disruptive. What an amazing opportunity for Thomas Simpson to work with a leading company that can potentially disrupt the entire housing industry. Lena Burkett is uh, from, I think, our second competition. We're particularly fond of her because she came to work for us. Uh, we noticed her, her special skills at the competition and she has come to DOE and been an outstanding employee, maybe too good because now NREL, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory has taken her away from us, but fortunately she still has tremendous contributions to the Building America program. Uh, Nathan Carre is now working for Thrive Home Builders, maybe one of the most highly uh, recognized zero energy ready home builders in the country. So successful, they were uh, selected as a builder of the year last year by professional builder and are so amazing in what they do. The owner of the company, Gene Myers is asked to speak all over the country about how innovative and successful his approach to building homes is. 
And so amazing opportunity for Nathan to work one of the top builders in the country. Peter Schneider was selected by Faithful and Gould to do really comprehensive cost analysis for building. He is so successful and so effective. He provides one of our webinars for the students on how to do cost analysis as part of the design challenge competition. And most recently, Shedden Martin with Prairie View A&M, uh, uh, second time winner in the competition last year, was picked up right out of the gate by HOK Architects to work on their team. Uh, they were such an amazing school and such an amazing uh, winner last year. Uh, it, was, it was not a surprise how quickly they were scooped up. And uh, Shannon's now going to probably have a great career with HOK. All to say, this competition truly changes people's lives. Next slide. So without question, one of the most critical uh, focal points of the competition is to integrate comprehensive building science into curriculum throughout the US and in fact, globally, as we see tremendous numbers of countries uh, engaging in our competition. But effectively, if you don't integrate the four control layers into your designs, into everything else that you do when you uh, are creating new buildings, you're taking on risk and you're putting uh, buildings in position where they may not uh, stand the test of time. So in everything we do, building science is tremendously important and we deliver a, I believe, 13 module course for all the students that participate in the competition that we believe is invaluable. Two of the leading instructors globally uh, have volunteered to provide this education to our students and building science is truly uh, an absolute necessity in today's marketplace. And it's a skill you'll get being part of this competition. Next slide. And speaking of our uh, major participation in the US and globally, you can see on this map a list of all the uh, locations of the universities that have participated in the Race to Zero competition that's now the design challenge. Uh, that includes over 2,300 students that have been inspired to be the next generation workforce for the housing industry and the building industry. We've had over 170 finalist teams from 80 uh, plus different college institutions. We've had over the last three years, a 50% increase in participation. A dozen of in, dozens of industry sponsors have been engaged and have supported the competition. Uh, the building science curriculum has been extensively adopted by so many of these universities. And we've grown to be comprehensively addressing both uh, residential and commercial buildings, recognizing how much of school um, uh, education for for uh, architecture, engineering, construction management uh, addresses the commercial building type. So this has been an amazing growth and interest in this competition. And this map is uh, almost daunting to see just how far it's spread, how quickly. Next slide, we'd like to talk about all the experiences at the Race to Zero, now the Design Challenge. And one of the foremost experiences we start right off with is a networking experience. So often when we're in architectural programs, as even I remember going all the way decades back to when I was in school, you're siloed at your university and often don't get a chance to benchmark what you're doing relative to other programs around the country. And in this case, you're able to meet and learn about programs globally. The uh, students have amazing exchanges, there's tremendous opportunities for networking, and it's truly one of the most important experiences for the competition to just meet all of this amazing um, enthusiasm, energy, and, uh, and just peer exchange that happens uh, at the competition. Next slide. Oh, another experience I wanna highlight is that's really important is that it's essential as i indicated earlier to learn how to present your ideas to your uh, uh that you develop and so we at the competition collect some of the best thought leaders and experts in the nation on a whole array of different uh building topics to be the jurors and you as 
participants in this competition really get an amazing experience to uh, present your ideas to them and get feedback from them about uh, your uh, ideas and your solutions. It's an amazing exchange. It energizes me to see all the good ideas and brilliant young professionals will be entering the workforce. With any luck, some of them will come work for me at my firm, was from one juror in the competition. Next slide. And the other experience that we think is really important is you get to experience uh, being in a high performance uh, campus and a high performance buildings, including one of the largest and first zero energy research facilities in the country. Uh, the tours that are given at the Race to Zero, now the design challenge, always are noted as some of the ones with the most engaged people on tour asking some of the best questions. The students are just outstanding uh, visitors who really get a tremendous amount out of seeing our campus and seeing our, the buildings that do a great job uh, demonstrating just what zero energy looks like and feels like get to walk through these buildings. Getting to see the NREL campus was an amazing opportunity. It's a place where I hope to work one day is the quote from one student. And Next slide. And that, of course, one of the things that we're very proud of that we've mentioned several times is that the students get to actually go and uh, assume lots of new careers from their experience being at the, uh, uh, at the competition. And so at the very end of the competition, right before the gala event, we have something called Career Connections. And what happens there is a lot of the sponsors and organizations that visit the competition set up tables and students have a chance to talk either about specific openings and positions at these companies or just to, in general, learn about careers and what it takes to be successful at these companies, organizations, uh, uh, very diverse group of, of, of opportunities that are presented. So Career Connections is one of the, um, the real special parts of the competition. Next slide. Uh, and here's last year's grand award winner. Uh, this is Prairie View A and M, uh, and we we love just that this school has is a second time winner. And last year, uh, it was amazing what they did. Uh, they went into their community, and uh, they found an real compelling need for a solution in an area affected by uh, the hurricane uh, that hit Houston uh, and wiped out a whole section of, of land. They interviewed uh, com community members. They developed an amazing design solution. They blew away the jurors and they presented it in a beautiful way. Uh, what's really exciting about the competition is that the entire plenary group get to see the top winners in each category present short 10 minute presentations about their designs and actually learn what it took to be a top winner in each category. And from the grand winners uh, selected, and again, in this case, Prairie View a and I love that you see in this case, Shelley uh, Portoff is the faculty advisor for the team in the middle. Um, and we love uh, the amazing job she's done at this university. Her leadership's been in, uh, incredible. As a result of this competition, uh, they set up a um, quasi offsite construction capability to build homes to these designs. So the, the impacts from the work at the competition go far beyond just what happens at the event. Uh, next slide. Uh, the winner in the commercial category, in this case, it was an elementary school category, um, was Middlebury. Uh, and what was really interesting was um, this wasn't an architectural student focus group, but a more broad liberal education group that came up with a great design. Um, the elementary school contest was new in 2018, and they really worked hard, this group, to really nail down the uh, how to work with their industry partners, uh, they really learned a lot of new skills and the community and developing a solution that really met the needs of that community. Uh, a lot of visible results in the engineering, uh, the resilience of the design. This this was great. Uh, first time out of the shoot for the commercial 
uh, building category, and uh, it was great to have Middlebury be successful. So they were the, uh, the winner in that commercial category. And then we come to one of the more fun parts of the competition. Uh, Rachel put up a board for students to put in uh, words to describe their weekend. Again, we believe this is life-changing. Highlight two words that jumped out at me, even though they're kind of buried on this board. Uh, the first is stressful. How interesting the word stressful is there, and it is. We're asking you to kind of jump out of your comfort, comfort zone to learn a lot of new skills that you may not get in many of the programs you're in, and to work in collaborative teams to uh, be under the pressure of presenting your designs in a very confined time allot allotment that you have, and to really mix it up with all these other schools. And that can be stressful to do that. But the other word I'll, I'll highlight here is changed. Again, this is life-changing. So many students who come here truly dedicate the rest of their careers to work in delivering high performance buildings that are truly going to make a difference. And so all I can say, it's time for your team story right here. It, we really think this is a great opportunity for you to take advantage of this unique competition, unique ability to learn, unique ability to network, unique ability to apply what you learn right away so that you nail down those skills, unique opportunity to engage and learn from people that you can possibly be working with in the near future, and to just leave uh, completely excited about what you're doing with the rest of your life. So I hope to see you come, I hope to see you in the next competition, and I'm going to hand off to Rachel right now. Thank you, Sam, and thank you for being such an inspiration to all of us. Um, so. Uh, we're going to go into some more specific details of the design challenge now that you're very excited about it all. Um, if you are interested in the build challenge uh, as well, don't forget to check out the webinar for that tomorrow. Um, you can find details about that on our website. All right. So participants in the design challenge uh, are really generating creative solutions for real world issues in our nation's building industry. Um, and teams are tasked with completing a design project and then attending the competition event where they present their designs to a panel of industry expert jurors. The design challenge is really designed to encourage student participation for one or two academic semesters, concluding in the spring with your project presentation and the awards banquet. So the competition guide provides the information teams need to participate. You can find the competition guide on the Solar Decathlon website under About, and then Apply, or there's a link in these slides as well. To get started in the competition, teams should thoroughly read Section 2 of the competition guide for the design challenge. The guide is your reference throughout the competition, and please note that Minor revisions will be coming in October and then again in January 2019. And these are really based on questions received and to ensure clarity for competing teams. In a design challenge, as Sam mentioned earlier, teams can choose from one of six distinct divisions based on their interests and passions. So you may choose to align um, you, uh, with the commercial projects because you hope to work in a commercial firm after graduation. Then perhaps mixed use multifamily, elementary school, or office building are the right division to choose for you. The office building division is new to the challenge this year and provides additional, team, additional options for teams and collegiate institutions focused on commercial buildings. Maybe you have a local build partner that would like an optimized solution or would like to develop a new solution for zero energy ready housing, then perhaps single family or attached housing divisions are right for you. It really is up to your team on what you decide to do. So within each of the divisions, all the projects revolve around similar principles. Each team begins by defining a specific location, building site or lot, 
and then neighborhood characteristics as context for your design, and then its relationship to the surrounding structures in the communities. Some teams have an industry partner like a nonprofit who gives some of these parameters, while others may be empowered by issues on their un university campus. Or someone on your team keeps driving by that brownfield and wants to complete a design for that area. Teams are able to develop a des new design or upgrade an existing design, such as production builder plans. Also, retrofits or building re rehabilitations are allowed under the competition. Please ensure that any retrofits or upgrades continue to meet the, con the division definition in which you are competing. Then teams will need then all teams work to demonstrate the effective integration of building science principles and best practice guidelines for building systems. Also in your project, you should demonstrate that you are relevant to the market that your team has specified. Now that we know the basic project requirements, let's look at the overall competition timeline. In the design challenge, your team application is due on November 6th indicating your intended division at that time. All teams who complete their team application will be accepted and are encouraged to begin work. Though note that some teams won't start until the spring. You'll have the option to submit a project introduction as part of your team application, which we will provide feedback on. We will talk more about the project introduction later in the webinar. On February 19, 2019, all teams are required to submit a project progress report. Based on that review, up to 48 finalist teams, eight in each of the six divisions are selected and invited to compete further with the final project report and presentation of their design at Design Challenge Weekend at NREL Campus in April. New this year, teams that complete the project progress report but are not selected to participate at final, as finalists at the Design Challenge Weekend are invited to send one attendee to the competition to present a poster. So everyone should plan to finish their project. Now Sam talked a little bit about uh, the design challenge contest, but I'd like to give a little bit more information. Uh, so we are one competition, two challenge challenges, and 10 contests for the solar, con solar decathlon. Um, do note that the contests do vary from the 2018 Race Zero contest, so please review the competition guide carefully as new and exciting features are emphasized this year. So first, energy performance. This contest evaluates the building's energy use in production as well as, as its capability to provide energy services. Energy performance is a primary focus and you will see energy themes in many of the contests. Engineering evaluates the effective integration of high performance engineering systems in energy efficient and energy producing buildings. Uh, engineering is uh, looks at several categories, so ensure to read the definition of that. Financial feasibility evaluates the building's financial costs and ability to address growing affordability challenges in the housing industry. Uh, we want to ensure that you are meeting your market needs in, in an appropriate way for that. Uh, resilience uh, is new this year as a contest um, and evaluates the bu building's ability to withstand and recover from prevailing disaster risks for its intended location um, and maintain critical operations during grid disruptions that commonly occur post-disaster and then ensure long-term durability in response to local climatic conditions. And then uh, fifth contest is architecture, evalu which evaluates the building architectural design for creativity, your overall integration of systems, uh, and the ability to deliver out outstanding aesthetics and functionality, along with your energy performance. You see the energy performance there again. Then we have operation to see how the building operates and how it's intended to. Market potential, uh, looking at your target market that uh, your team has divine, defined and how uh, your design meets that definition. Comfort and environmental quality, 
uh, looks at your indoor air quality and all the pieces that are involved with that, including HVAC systems. And then innovation uh, looks at how uh, your team has innovated within your design. And then presentation. Uh, so how are you conveying this and, and is it effective for the jurors? So those are our 10 uh, contests. So check out the task overview in the competition guide next. Uh, you can review winning team presentation and event photos. You can always e email the organizers with questions and our address is listed there. Um, make to uh, ensure that all the team members have access to the Florida Cathlon Groups.io project site, which we'll be talking about more here shortly. Um, we'll be talking more about the building science training as well. Uh, look for industry partnership uh, and start on your project and submit all your materials by the deadlines. And we'll be going over all of this in more detail. So forming a team. When forming your team, there are many options for putting it together. A university or college may have more than one team. You just need to compete in different divisions. One group competes in suburban single family and the other in the office building, or one group in urban single family and one in the local build division. A team may be comprised of one or more collegiate institutions, so you may find someone to partner with. Often we find a strong architecture school partnering with a strong engineering school, along with other combinations. Student team members can be from any discipline and any level of collegiate schooling, but they must be a degree-seeking student. You will also need to have a faculty advisor lead and a student team lead whom the organizer can contact with questions. Three total students with the faculty advisor lead create a complete team at a very minimum. Within your team, consider looking for members outside of your program. Construction management, interior designers, business, and environmental are some of the disciplines that you will help to have on the project. Then reach out to industry partners or uh, advisors who can provide additional mentorship during the des design phase. Common industry partnerships include builders and architects, uh, city officials, contractors, developers, um, energy auditors, uh, engineering firms, trades, and potential collegiate alumni. Industry partnerships are encouraged to provide a market-ready perspective for proposed solutions and to help select and integrate building systems into the built design. For team, teams are encouraged to engage with a variety of professionals and help the students in their decision-making processes and review the project. And then as Sam talked a little bit about, we, have, we conclude in Design Challenge Weekend. So on Friday of Design Challenge Weekend in April, we'll gather all the students for a kickoff. On Saturday, you'll present your designs to jurors who will choose the top team in each division and provide valuable feedback on Sunday morning, six winners, one from each division, are awarded trophies. These six winning teams will then present to a grand jury and all the attendees who will choose the best amongst the best following an eight minute overview presentation at the awards banquet. Ultimately, a single Design Challenge grand winner will be selected and we'll talk more about Design Challenge Weekend as we get closer to the event in our webinars. Um, a few more details that are important to know for planning. The Design Challenge, uh, 48, final, 48 finalist teams will be invited to compete in person at the Design Challenge Weekend. Uh, information is being provided to teams now about the competition event for planning purposes. The event, as Sam discussed, provides a rich experience for on-site participants through networking opportunities, and attending other team presentations and professional presentations. The organizers expect at least one and up to five students total from each team may attend in person and then a faculty advisor. 
We currently encourage all students who are on site to participate in the team presentation, presentation but faculty may not participate in that. Um, the organizers do not provide financial assistance for lodging or travel expenses, uh, but we will have a block of hotel rooms near the Enroll campus available at a discounted rate. The poster session also encourages collaboration across the contest and an opportunity to see all the teams in one location during the event. So how to succeed. Our application site is designed to be straightforward and simple, and you can access it from the apply page on the Florida Cathlon website. It should complete, be completed by a single person, either your faculty advisor or a team leader from each team that is applying. If you have multiple teams applying for your school, each application should have a different person submitting an application. One of the first things that is asked will be for you to select your challenge. This will change what you see on the following screen. And if you choose the design challenge, you'll be walked through that process specifically. So teams must apply by November 6th and pay a non-refundable $100 application fee. Uh, in the design challenge, all teams who successfully complete their application will be accepted to participate in November. To Fall into this category, the team must identify that faculty or student team leader with the preliminary roster of student members, select the division, and pay the fee. Optionally, submit a uh, project introduction with basic information about the team approach and structure, and we'll talk about that here shortly. All participating teams will be announced in Denver in December. Each team needs to submit a team roster, one roster for each team in the division. Each team must have at least three students and a faculty lead, and the team roster can be found on the team application site. Submitting a roster will provide the organizers a list of names to grant access to the solidicathlongroups.io project site which will be the means of communication for information, future webinars, and other resources. As your team is formed, you can resubmit updated team rosters as often as needed. Make sure to change the submission date in the file before resubmitting. After your team registers, those who are on the team application or the team roster, if submitted, will be invited to join the groups.io project site. The site is used as the main form of communication during the competition. When you join the groups.io project site, you'll be invited to the Solar Decathlon site as well. This will be used for announcements for the competition as a whole. Then there is the design challenge groups.io project site. This groups.io portal will continue to provide updated information throughout the competition preparation. When you receive the invitation, please accept it and log on to the project site. Ensure you can view the main resources, including the messages, which are messages about webinars and documents being posted, and then files, which hold all the resources teams need to compete. Under the messages tab, you will find messages from the design challenge organizers including information about upcoming webinars, links to the recordings like today's, and PDFs of the webinar files, and other competition announcements. Currently, uh, our design challenge uh, co-director has posted a welcome message for us. Under the files tab, your team will find a folder of webinar recordings and slides as well as important competition documents. Currently, the competition guide attachments are posted, a copy of the roster file, and a recruiting flyer are posted to the groups.io. When documents are added, the organizers will post a message about new files. We hope you'll find the groups.io project site useful to you as you begin building your designs. 
There are several educational resources that come that are offered by the organizers to teams. So as students engage for the next four to eight months in the design challenge, the organizers offer these resources. The building science training is offered as well as the computation information specific webinars. Rem, the REMRATE software is available for download and then organizers will have a code uh, for you to extend the use of the license through the end of the project available soon. Our sponsors will also be providing resources at a later date as well when they're on board. For the financial analysis and feasibility contest, the organizers will provide a tool to complete this in a uniform manner across the teams. And finally, past winning presentations and designs are available to give new teams an idea of the competition deliverables. A little more on the building science training. All team members must complete a free building science training offered. The training is online and on demand and covers the principles of high performance buildings as taught by renowned industry leaders. As soon as the organizers have an updated team roster, students may access the training starting at the end of September. Upon completion of each video, students will be prompted to answer a few comprehensive questions. Uh, and upon completion of the entire set of videos, a certificate will be provided to show completion of the course. Or if you have equivalent courses at your university, um, your team's faculty lead may waive the building science training on the roster. The organizers help uh, provide software for building, modeling, and the competition. For residential divisions, REMRATE will be avail made available at no charge to teams. Um, and they'll uh, do check the groups.io project site for more information here in the future. Open Studio is a tool provided for commercial divisions. For elementary school, a package is available now on the groups.io once you are registered. Um, some improvements in the instructions for the elementary school will be made available this fall. A similar package for office buildings will also be available uh, by November, uh, but you are welcome to access Open Studio and other information online now, or your team is able to use a different software package if they choose. So in the design challenge, documentation is vital to conveying your design to the organizers and jurors. There are five main project submissions throughout the competition year to help teams show progress and get feedback when possible. At this time, we will go over the project introduction. In future webinars, we, go, we will go over the other project submissions in addition to the technical content of the webinar. Please note that when teams are looking at 2018 documents from past, past winners, that the pro project submissions have changed. So make sure you follow the competition guide for exact instructions. By November 6th, the same deadline as your team application, submit your optional project introductions detailed in the rules. The project introduction provides the information necessary to communicate the points of the project to all competition participants. It should be considered a high-level summary to describe the project. Teams submit the optional project introduction first as a standalone document, and then it will be integrated into your later uh, project report. There are three parts to the project introduction. First, the project summary, then team information and project highlights. Teams use the project summary template that is available on the Solar Decathlon website and is linked in the guide for inclusion in the project introduction. Uh, past project summaries can be viewed on the website as well. Um, the template uses filler text as a placeholder for the content that the team inserts. Uh, it is understood that for the initial submission, the project details might be considerations, aspirations, or otherwise tentative and subject, subject to change for future submissions. For consistent review and to start practicing competition principles, the organizers have set out format requirements for all the deliverables. Please use standard paper size with single space 11 point font for body text. The maximum page length is five pages in a single bookmarked PDF. 
Please submit a file that is 10 megabytes or less in size and name it according to published instructions. The required file naming convention is seen here and is also posted on the team application site. You post your project introduction to the Des Design Challenge Dropbox project introduction link. Um, this link will also be posted to the groups.io in messages in case you complete your team application sooner and then want to submit your project introduction at a later date. Project introductions will be evaluated based on two criteria. Organizers will ensure that the building design is in compliance with the contest definition and that you are meeting submission format requirements. Feedback will be provided to teams on only these two items as it's still early in the design. We really enjoy seeing your ideas early and love to review your project introduction. So I hope you look forward to putting one of those together with your team. Some keys to success. There's a lot on here, but uh, our teams have found this to be successful in the past. Read the competition guide. Read the competition guide again and read it again. Um, that is, the competition guide contains all the information you need to participate. Plan for good team communication. Ensure you uh, submit your deliverables on time or early, as recommended. Uh, look for good industry partnerships that will help to bring expertise to your project. Create a compelling and complete project for project submissions. Clearly explain your project and get reviews uh, and feedback from people on that. Agree on uh, joint vision and design goals and program from the beginning. Select a team lead who will bring out the best of the team and lead them through the competition. Have great team meetings. We see pictures posted sometimes of uh, effective team meetings. Work with, uh, create an environment of mutual respect. Remain open to others' recommendations. Uh, create a schedule along the timeline of the organizer's schedule that we've talked about today. Submit your work early uh, to the Dropbox links at all of your milestones, and have fun. Uh, this is a great project we hear of teams uh, really enjoying the work as they move forward in their final design. So I hope this has inspired you to form a team, get your team application in, and start your work. Uh, I want to thank you for your attention today. I know that was a lot of information. Um, so make sure you continue to engage with the organizers and ask us questions. Um, we are using uh, hashtag solar to cast one this year. So don't forget to tag your social media posts and show your enthusiasm. And maybe we will highlight you and your team on the next webinar. Our next webinar uh, will be What is Good Design with Sam Rashkin, our uh, chief architect and uh, co director. It will be on Wednesday, October 24th at 3 p.m. There is a link here, and there will be an, a link available on the Solar Decathlon website uh, in the next week or so. Um, all webinars are recorded and available on the groups.io portal uh, project site uh, with the PDF of the slides, and announcements of future webinars will also be on the groups.io portal. So with that, uh, we would love to take questions. Uh, please note that you can uh, send your questions to solardecathlon at nrel.gov or sddesign at nrel.gov. Uh, general questions can be directed to solardecathlon at ee.doe.gov, and those are questions about solar decathlon as a whole. With that, thank you so much for your attendance, and we'll take questions. Great, this is Lynn. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Sam, for um, sharing all of that amazing information. Um, we'll start Q&A, um, and as Rachel mentioned, um, feel free to submit questions um, throughout the webinar today, and you can also ask questions after as well. So the first question um, is a 
uh, one for Rachel or Sam. If uh, teams participate in the design challenge, do they have to participate in the build challenge as well? Great question. Uh, so the team application is for the challenge you apply for. So uh, the answer is no. If you apply to participate in the design challenge, you are just applying to participate in the design challenge. If you do apply for the build challenge, you're going to have a different schedule, slightly different schedule and participate in some of the design challenge. And our uh, design challenge manager, Joe, will talk more about that tomorrow. Great, thank you, Rachel. Um, the next question, um, Rachel or Sam, um, can schools apply to compete in more than one division like they have in years past, um, or are they limited to just one? Teams can no, they apply. Can, Go ahead, Sam. You know, there's no limitation on the number of divisions. Um, the only thing is, I, um, and Rachel, I think get the point here is that you can't have two teams um, in the same division. They have to be in different uh, divisions. Correct. So uh, University X cannot have two teams in the office building division. You need to have a team in the office building and the elementary school. Um, but teams could apply for up to six divisions within the design challenge. So you could apply to elementary school, urban single family, suburban single family, office built. You could apply to every single division from one collegiate institution. Great. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Rachel. Um, the next question is about the 10 contests. Um, how have the 10 contests changed from last year's uh, judging criteria, um, Rachel, you had mentioned resilience being new and that type of thing. And so um, can you expand on that? Have, uh, how have the judging criteria changed um, with the 10 contests this year? Actually, let me take that one because I was going to say that it's changed very little. A lot of it is semantics, how things are, are named. But basically, in the end, I don't think that the uh, – the actual requirements for the teams have changed very much at all. What we thought was very important this year would have 10 contests that aligned for both the build and the design challenge. And what we did was look at both contests for both groups. Uh, we used to call it criteria for the race to zero. And we meshed them so they had the best fit possible. But virtually everything you did last year you're doing this year and what might be subtly different is how it's combined in a different contest category or criteria than it was the prior year but uh nothing terribly new nothing terribly different sometimes they call different things so you should not expect much difference thank you sam great thank you sam um, the next question is if uh, a school does want to participate in more than one, say, uh, one of the commercial contests and one of the residential ones, do they um, need to apply and um, pay the fee more than once? Yes. So if you, if school, University X wants to apply to be in the office building division and the urban single family division you need to apply for office building pay the fee and then apply for urban single family and pay the fee so uh, one application one fee great thank you rachel sam did you have anything to add to that rachel was perfect Okay, um, so the next question, um, and Sam, this is just a follow-on to um, your response about the 10 um, contests. So if the 10 contests are very similar, um, will there be a different review criteria for design versus build? 
they're subtly different, uh, particularly because in the build competition, there'll be juried events where teams have to actually have their work measured in, uh, with some tests or other kinds of inspections. So there's some additional requirements for them because they're actually building their homes. They'll actually be measured and, and so forth. So that's the biggest element that's different between the two. But otherwise, the criteria are fairly similar. I'll also mention that the build challenge by design is more forward-looking, where it's um, really imperative with the design challenge to demonstrate that your solutions are market ready. What's so exciting about this competition is students get to show the, get to show the industry their ingenuity and creativity uh, designing buildings that meet the highest performance levels specified by the federal government and how they can do that and meet the cost and constructability requirements of the mainstream construction industry. So it's a really exciting challenge to show the future can be done today. In contrast, that the design, the build challenge uh, program, uh, often the students will be trying to look for some forward looking technologies and innovations that might not meet those cost effective constructability uh, criteria that uh, are part and parcel of the design challenge. Great, thank you so much. Um, Sam, um, another question that just came in is whether or not um, Rachel had mentioned uh, up to 48 uh, collegiate institutions being able to participate in the design challenge. When will the schools, um, when will those schools be notified that they are going to be able to participate? So. Uh, all schools will be accepted after the November deadline and announced in December that they are participating teams. Uh, all teams will move forward and we will look forward to your project progress report on February 19th. At that time, uh, a team from the organizers are going to review your project progress report and finalize the selection of the 48 finalist teams. Uh, all teams are invited to participate, but the 48 finalist teams get to bring up to five students and one faculty lead to participate and present. Uh, teams that do not make the finalist uh, designation will be invited to present a poster if they complete their final project report. And that, can, that information can be found in the guide. Okay, great. Thanks, Rachel. Um, the next question is um, whether or not there is an opportunity to have mixed-use development, such as an office, um, office having retail below and living space above. So, great question. Um, by high demand of our teams, uh, we have brought in the mixed-use multifamily, uh, which allows for something like retail below up to 20% of the space for something like retail or commercial use, and then the rest dwelling units. Um, right now, we don't have uh, necessarily a mix of dwelling units and, say, 50% office buildings. Good question, though. Great. Thank you um, so much, Rachel. So. Um, Sam and uh, Rachel, the next question relates to new teams who have never participated um, in a student competition like Solar Decathlon or the Race to Zero before. Um, what is your recommendation um, based on your experiences and best practices? How can a school, whether it's a student or a faculty person, how can they get started? What should they do? Um, first, so, uh, and what is your recommendation for them to start um, developing a team? You know, I have recommendations and uh, and then I'll let, let Rachel chime in because um, there's so much uh, on their NREL website that she'll be more familiar with, but I'm going to first um, let folks know that the Race to Zero website's being left uh, accessible because it is so useful just for that purpose. You can look at all the past competitions. You can look at all the past winning entries. 
you can uh, really learn from how it's progressed over time and actually see quite a significant increase in the sophistication of the designs, uh, uh, the technical solutions. But learning from the past entries is one of the most useful um, uh, methods I could recommend to really prepare for the competition. And particularly looking at the materials they submitted, it's really helpful to know where you have to get to once you enter into the competition, what the final submitted package looks like. Um, thereafter, um, um, I, I think it's really important to recognize that the resources we provide really complement all the good work uh, your professors and program provides at your schools. Uh, the, again, the building science training is invaluable. Uh, a lot of the uh, work we, uh, pr uh, the lessons we provide on software, cost analysis, all of that is really, really helpful. And that will be posted, uh, as Rachel said, if you don't see them uh, as they're given, they're all posted 24 seven on the website. I'll let Rachel add any other recommendations you might have. Thanks, Sam, those were great. Uh, so in terms of successful stories we've heard, uh, a very involved and active faculty advisor is a great place to start, but it also takes a really involved and great team uh, to put together this work. So teaming together, learning about each other, uh, getting to know each other's strengths and using those to the best of their ability and finding where you can supplement those strengths. Um, one of our teams said they didn't ha feel like their energy modeling was strong, so they found a really good industry partner to help train a team member on that. Um, so finding and yes, using those resources like Sam said uh, is really important right out of the gate. Great, thank you, Sam. Thank you, Rachel. Um, the next question relates to the teams. Is there any requirement for the minimum number of team members or the maximum number of team members? So the minimum number of team members is that faculty lead plus three students, um, one of them being the student team lead. Uh, we do not have a maximum number of team members. Uh, but I think you'll find an efficiency point somewhere in there. Um, some of our schools are doing a down select, so they have a lot of team members right now that are kind of divided and doing individual preliminary designs, and then they'll select the best one, and that team will move forward. So there's a variety of ways to go about this, um, and to figure out which one is best for you is the way to go. Great, thank you, Rachel. Um, and I just wanted to add a note. I see that um, someone has raised their hand, and um, due to the number of lines we have, we can't um, unmute anyone, so continue just submitting your questions if you have questions. Um, let's see, with um, that, um, the next question involves um, the partners. Um, Rachel had mentioned industry partners um, and that type of thing, but are, can, can schools um, partner with other schools or is that um, not allowed? So uh, teams can partner with other schools. Uh, so uh, we rec you need to do that on your team application. So select that team now. Uh, we've had several very successful university partnerships. Uh, industry partners, you do not need to declare yet. Uh, you can talk about them in your project introduction and your project progress report and your project report as you go. Um, so if you need more or different ones at a later date, you can always add them. Um, but the project uh, industry partners are a vital part. Uh, so, um, Past industry sponsors have been energy modelers, product manufacturer reps, uh, and they'll often teach you about the product and show you how to use it and how to implement it. Uh, green architecture firms, sustainability, uh, materials manufacturing, a whole variety. Um, so I encourage faculty leads to kind of use their network and reach out um, with alumni and uh, with other groups to find your industry partners. 
Great, thank you, Rachel. Um, and with that, um, we are going to wrap up our webinar. Um, but as I mentioned, feel free to continue submitting questions to the email addresses that you see on the screen now. Um, I wanna thank our speakers today. Thank you so much, Sam and Rachel. Um, and if you have any wrap up comments, I'll let you do that now. Sam? Uh, sure. Uh I hope you're not overwhelmed. There's so many details that uh, we do cover in these webinars because there is a lot to um, to kind of apply and get yourselves into the into the uh, competition. And my message is just to encourage you not to get daunted by the uh, the process. Once you do it, it's a lot less difficult than it may sound. The rewards for being in this competition are so compelling and so. Uh, will so much enhance your career at school that we encourage you to kind of stick with it and and uh, get yourselves into this competition. Uh, no matter how far you get into the competition from the beginning all the way to the major event, everything you do uh, will help you learn something very important and critical to where the whole construction industry is going uh, almost with certainty. So please do take advantage of this. Uh, you, uh, I cannot begin to explain the event itself. You have to be there to feel the enthusiasm, the excitement, and just, just um, again, how uh, everyone is so excited just to be part of that event. So best of luck to everyone. We hope to see you all. It truly is one of the most uh, enjoyable things I do at the Department of Energy. Thanks, Sam. And thank you, all attendees. Uh, we and the organizer staff are so excited to uh, see team applications and have you signing up to participate. And please let us know if you have any questions. We are here to answer them uh, even after today's webinar. So thank you, and we look forward to your application. Yep. And um, thank you again, Rachel and Sam. And as um, the speakers mentioned, if you are interested in the Build Challenge, there is a webinar tomorrow. So feel free to reach out to that, us if you do, don't have those details and would like them, we will be happy to share. Um, good luck, everyone, and thank you so much for your time today.